really good cooperation. Yes, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, and I'll try to have my five minute of famous here. Um, before doing that, you are already very well seated here, but I need your participation because I need to know what your pre expectations are. So please, all of those who think that NATO interpretation is important, please rise up and. <laughs> okay. Uh, it seems positive right now. Okay, all those people who think NATO interpretation is important, but think it needs more funding, please wave your heads like this. Yeah, you, some of you are in. Those who think you need more political attention, wave your hand while you're using your head. And those who need to get better themselves personally, you jump at you while well, you do it like this. <laughs> okay? No, that seems good. I think we're calibrated right, right now. Well, I have very short time here, and there's so, so many important things to talk about. My issues today would be, how do we create a platform in the Norwegian, Scandinavian uh, countries that will you know, deal with the best practice of, uh, of doing uh, of, uh, uh, nature interpretation? And uh, I know, I think that we often think of, of ourselves as being, you know, the, uh, the nature people. Well, uh, I, yesterday I did a presentation in Norway, and I, I took some of their figures. You know, this is Pierre Gunda, a very famous uh, figure who walks in the in the mountains, and and that's the way we and Scandinavian people look at us. Of we are you know, we are native people. We don't need this, or. We think ourselves with the old, you know, national history people. You know, here we got Amundsen who just conquered the, the South Poland. It's just exactly how it is. But I think that the real challenge is that we are just exactly like the rest of the world. The young people are sitting in front of the screens. They, most of them, are living in the, the metropoles, and uh, we need to, you know, to take them uh, into some new uh, environmental. Uh, experience. So our common challenge is that the, uh, the societies are having a, less, uh, a smaller economy. So the way we deal with society, you know, we put children into school and we, you know, you try to form them for being citizens in a, in a part in the world. And w we need to do that in the best way. And right now I think there is uh, what you could call a, a Opportunity, a door of, of, of possibilities that we could we could walk at. Because normally, when we are th we are thinking of, of uh, uh, education, politicians only think about you know the hardcore thing, the the math and the, the you know the the things that could draw business into into society. But uh, s I think right now there is opportunity in the Dan Denmark, for instance. We are trying now to to create a new school reform that is taking into account those principles that we are using in nature interpretation. And uh, I have I've listed some of them uh, here uh, uh, because we have. I think that's a common problem in all over the world that we are in the school system that we have built up. Our world is so complex now that you need to go for school for 10, 12, 11 years before you s you have the base program. All those people who are not capable of that, we are losing them. And we, uh, I think that's a huge problem all over the world because losers cannot take part in controlling society, democracy, or nature, or anything. So that, in fact, is a very important problem. And we can use some of those principles that we are dealing with in nature interpretation, and we can make them the best political arguments, you know, to take nature interpretation much longer into the political agenda. That's, I think that's very important. Um, uh, as Anna told you, Danish nature interpretation have been working for 25 years doing this, and I tried to to measuring a very simple model of the difference between being a normal school system or in a, what what I would call the outdoor school system, and I call it the the school management. And manus is, is a hand, and and you know there is five different st uh, students type. You have the clever one, you know, the TT is asking, and he would, they would point, it's n normally a female, they would point the thing and say, well, miss, could I, please? Those are so good in the school system, but they fit perfectly into what we are thinking about learning. And then we have those, the thumb people, they are you now just hiking on. 
they are. They are dealing all right because, you know, oh, oh, that's the way to do it. I'll just get on with it. And then we have the real problem, you know them, these people here. <laughs> you know, they, uh, you, you, we, we, today we're drugging them. We're giving, I think it's called ret Ritalin also in English or what. You know, in, in Denmark it's about, what, I think it's uh, 10 or 15% of the Danish boys. You give them, you drug them to put them into school. And that's a quite big problem. And then you have the, we call the ring finger. You know, and now I need you, try to put the, the, your ring finger onto the floor. You know, you're in a school, in a room, and here you've got the ring finger. You can't move it, can't you? You need, if those students here, you have to take them and lift them to put them somewhere to move them. <laughs> so difficult. Needs so many resources, you know. And then you have the students who are like your little fingers. They don't need, they don't do anything. They're just, you know, checking out. They're not part of the system. That is what I would call the normal school system. And if we turn that to the outdoor school system hand now, we have this finger of, I know, miss, I can reproduce. It would become curiosity. It would become, oh, what is that out there? It, you know, you turn the table and you make it to my demand for vision or, 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 or knowledge. It becomes from, from the, the pointing finger. And the thumb is, oh, is it all right to ask? All right, I'm going to do it. And you know, when these two are working together, we have what is unique for human mankind. It's the grip. We can, you know, take, pick things up and we can use them. We can put them into our head perfectly. And those here, they got space, they got room. That, you know, there's no need for those conflicts. So you can take your finger, put it into the ground, you can feel where you are. <laughs> Impressive, isn't it? And this one, when you're taking it out in the free, you can bend it, it can move. It does it all by itself. And the little finger, you know, you can also do it to clear your senses. So you're, oh, <laughs> what's happening here? That's a very, you know, sometimes you just need some, uh, a way to look at on a problem. And now I, I preserve for you a hand model of how to look at the school. Um, well, I'll drop all these good arguments. You know them, all of them, that how, why it's good. Uh, and also, I think you mentioned it, Pierre, uh, one of the things that is good for native interpretation, what we can do with the schools, and we can provide them uh, teachers' training, we can provide them uh, local knowledge, and then uh, we have all the special tools that we, we can, we can uh, show. But my vision, and this is in a, in a more Scandinavian context, is that I would love that we could, you know, cooperate uh, much closer with all what I call them outdoor consulant or, or nature interpreters to, to create a, a best practice of, of, I just call it the new Nordic school right now. It's because we have a, a, a thing in Denmark called new Nordic food and it had been world famous. So I would grab them all at, at instance to use them. But because in Norway, they have an outdoor school practice that's been going on for years. They have a very strong outdoor uh, tradition, but they have not been thinking so much about interpretation yet. But I, th I, I went to this conference and I can feel it. It's growing. It's, you know, it's like walking on warm coal. Things are going to happen up there. And I got all their oil money and we're going to help them by spending these in a proper way. <laughs> Uh, <coughs> and in Sweden, you also have a very good tradition of doing the scientist work. So you know, we c we have the, the the we can you know give the politician the right arguments because whatever we do, and you had a very good point. Every time uh, we do anything work, we have to go. What is this beneficial to the society for the local politician? If we don't do that, we can do nothing. That's so. All th that should also be the you know before taking into the, uh, the door uh, and you, what can I do for society here? What will make it better? I think that's not only what I think is best for people. So, uh, 
we were thinking about very small, and that is what our workshop is going to uh, take uh, into the b the big issue: is how could we create such platform? And some of the things could be trying to you know lift it up in a political uh, atmosphere, uh, and and maybe have an uh, a Scandinavian uh, uh, conference where we have you know some political attention. Uh, but we can debate that later on. And also, uh, I think what could be some of the outcome today that we could point out some people who would join into a steering group that would take this uh, this uh, matter seriously if it is in the uh Baltic, uh, Nordic uh, arena, or it's another arena. I don't know because you know the project you did with 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 some Scandinavian people. You talked about that it could be part two of that one. So there's a lot of opportunities, and I think that's got what we're going to debate. So why now? I think I have answered, and I used my time. So thank you for listening. <laughs>